This morning, Donald Trump and the Biden campaign speaking out about RFK Jr. as a recent poll shows him edging ahead in favorability. I've always liked him, and I've known him, actually, for a long time. I've liked him. He's a very liberal guy. He's probably the most liberal person in the race, including the Green Party. So I think he's probably going to hurt Biden. I don't see him hurting me. Our people are solid. We have a very, very solid core, and I think that core is 60 percent. Well, Trump 2024 National Press Secretary Caroline Levitt joins us now. Hi, Caroline. Your thoughts, RFK now is going to get it from both sides. I mean, the Democrats are trying mm -hmm. hard to keep him uh, off the ballot, and you guys are talking about how left-wing uh, left he is and how he loves conspiracy theories. But on the polls, it looks as though right now, after, especially after naming that vice presidential ca uh, candidate, it looks like he hurts the left more. Mm -hmm. Yes, good morning, guys. It's great to be with you. And that's right, Brian. The polling does indicate that RFK Jr. hurts Joe Biden far more than he hurts President Trump. And it's because RFK gives the far left Democrats in this country another option, those Democrats who are increasingly dissatisfied with Joe Biden's presidency. And for common sense, independent Americans out there, we have already seen what Joe Biden's radical energy and environmental agenda has done to this country with crippling record high inflation, record high gas prices, RFK Jr. wants to take it a step further. He has actually expressed support for a national smart grid that the federal government would control that can turn off the electricity and water in your home. That is communism. President Trump certainly does not support policies like that. He supports reinvigorating our energy industry. Mm -hmm. If you want a president who supports freedom and will bring down the cost of your electric and water bills, there's only one candidate on the option, uh, and that is President Trump. So, Caroline, what is the message to the Republicans? We just came back from a heated primary. What is the message to those folks that are still resistant or troubled to come back home? Mm -hmm. We're already seeing those voters come back home. As the new Fox News poll showed, uh, President Trump has 93% of support from Republicans right now. We encourage all Republicans, independents, even disillusioned Democrats mm -hmm. who are fed up with Joe Biden's candidacy to join President Trump. And the president has never been in a stronger position to win. Not only is he dominant, he's actually growing his support. He's winning independents by double digits. He's leading with Hispanic Americans and women, and he's winning a historic margin of African Americans and it's because it's this election on November is a binary <clears throat> choice between a former president and President Trump a man of the people as we saw last week as he traveled to New York City to support the family of <clears throat> officer Diller and the New York Police Department, a president who supported law and order, created the most secure border in our nation's history, versus Joe Biden, who is a corrupt career politician who was joking it up on the very same day of those services in New York with limousine liberals and out-of-touch elitists who is bankrolled by Hollywood and Silicon Valley and whose policies have ripped off everyday hardworking Americans across this country. That's the oh. choice that voters have to make. And we believe President Trump's winning message of making this country country great and safe and prosperous again is one that all Americans can get behind. Caroline, uh, if RFK Jr. pulls from the right at all, it's probably simply because he is very much, in his own words, skeptical, if not anti-vaccine. He's against the government's ability to do what they did to us in 2020 and 2021, which is to lock us down, have mandates. President Trump sings a similar song, but he was in charge of Operation Warp Speed. That did happen under his administration. What's his answer to those that might vote for RFK Jr. simply because of that to ensure, hey, under his second administration, that's not going to be the case? Well, it's a very small answer, and RFK Jr. during COVID also expressed support for shutdowns and increased masking at the time, while President Trump was saying that we need to reopen America's economy. I was working in the White House at the time. I recall in the summer of 2020, the president had a meeting with teachers and students across the country to say we need to reopen our schools, and it was Democrats like RFK Jr. and Joe Biden who pushed for the shuttering of businesses and schools, which has done detrimental harm to not only
only America's children, but also, of course, to our economy, which is still reeling from the impact of it because of Joe Biden's increased poli taxes, spend policies as well. RFK Jr., at the end of the day, wants more government. He wants the government to mm. control more aspects of <laughs> Americans' lives. President Trump wants to make the government smaller, and he wants to give people the freedom to choose which vehicle they can drive, how long they can take a shower for, how long <laughs> they can keep their lights on. Yeah. RFK Jr. wants the government to make those decisions for you. Yeah, Carolyn, I do think that as people scratch the surface, I think he's a very likable guy. I, I want to bring this up to you because I know a lot of suburban moms who are very attracted to RFK's message. It is what Joey talked about, that they're angry about how COVID was handled, Fauci, um, you know, the, the suppression of alternative, mm -hmm. um, you know, medications at the early part of the, uh, of the pandemic. But they also like his message on food policy, on going after big pharma, on ultra processed foods and, and, the, and, and that connection for healthcare in America. He's sort of talking to um, a lot of um, women in that way. And I'm curious why mm -hmm. Donald Trump hasn't jumped on that, because if anybody could take on big food, I know he took on big pharma. Um, what, what is he doing in that space? Mm -hmm. He actually has unleashed a plan on his Agenda 47 policy platform to take on Big Pharma, to bring down the cost of health care for American families across the country, and to also in, in support and increase our agricultural industry right now in this country, family farms across the country who yeah. are being robbed by the Chinese Communist Party, which is buying up a vast majority of American farmland and trying to control our food supply. President Trump is opposed to that. He has put forth a plan. I'd encourage everyone to go read it on donaldjtrump.com. But when we look at women, what are the top issues for them? It's immigration and it's inflation and it's crime. And we've seen increased crime in every community across this country. We've seen Joe Biden's gotcha. wide open border policies uh, unleashing illegal immigrants and criminals in every corner of hey, this nation. Every state has hey, become Caroline, a border state. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to leave it there. We're up against a hard break. But thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.